Hey everyone, this is the Jade Marissa podcast talking to you from Thailand about the good, bad and ugly in combat sports and pop culture. This is episode 7 and I'm here with my brother, Aaron Sirisampan. Hello. He is a commentator for Thai Fight and commentated on multiple fight promotions including Kunlun Fight, MBK Fight Night, All Star Fight and many more. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about a little bit more about Aaron, a little bit about myself and it wasn't until maybe March, two months ago, when I was having back surgery, and I told Aaron that he was a big inspiration in my life, actually, towards me, a little a, a role model to me. Um, basically, it's because he had a large influence on movies and music and wrestling and things like that. Okay. <laughs> so, um, first question I want to ask Aaron is who is your who was your favorite wrestler on WWE <laughs> <laughs> oh my growing up uh, <laughs> uh the rock maybe the rock yeah yeah I, like the rock I, I was a massive wrestling fan growing up though up yeah until I the know. age about 12 or 13 yeah I was is. consumed by it. well not consumed by it but yeah because we were like one of the first uh houses in our neighborhood to get sky Really? Yeah, you won't know this, but yeah. Lucky. So right around what ninety two or ninety three, when well you weren't born actually until ninety two, right? Yeah, ninety two. So yeah, so we got like Sky One and Sky Sports that showed showed like the old wrestling stuff. Like, wow. And remember like going to our next door neighbor to watch WrestleMania nine or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it's not. I know it's fake. All right, <laughs> leave me alone. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure how fake predetermined. It, I'm not sure how fake it is because every time there was a new move or some move that Aaron wanted to practice, I was his. <laughs> <laughs> I was his dummy for that. I think every older brother can appreciate what you're saying right now. Definitely got body slammed <laughs> on the couch a few times. Hey, I got fi- before you were born. This is a true story. Well, in. In, uh, in Manchester, we had a restaurant, right? And above the restaurant, there were some offices. Yeah. And during the summer holidays, when mum and dad were working, and I like, had so much energy, they'd, like there was a back room in the offices where they'd, like, there was a TV. Like me and, me and Danny, our cousin, we would play, all right? And now there was like some of, the, some of the kitchen staff, they would have kids and they would come upstairs as well and play. Wow. And one, one of the kids, this is true, put a figure four leg lock on me <laughs> and I couldn't walk for like a week. <laughs> This is, that's true. Ask mum when I was about five, five or six. I'm serious though, probably about like two or three days, I couldn't walk. Um, sometimes mum and dad's staff, like the, like the chefs in the restaurant, yeah. they would hold me over the fire in the kitchen. Oh, right. Like, uh, okay. <laughs> See you in court. <laughs> See you in, well, yeah, Elliot, yeah. people right. like that, Dale, yeah. Okay. So growing up, um, definitely had a bit of a very rough and tough, playful childhood. But, I mean, it makes you stronger, right? I think it's yeah, I created her. She's a fighter because of me. <laughs> so, another question. Favourite film or martial arts movie? Oh, I can answer both. Yeah, answer both. I think you know my favourite movie. Well, all your favourite movies are kind of like my favourite movies because I grew, grew up watching your, your movies. But you bought me the poster, do you remember? Pulp Fiction. Pulp, Pulp Fiction's my favourite movie. Quentin Tarantino, do you know he's bringing out a new movie? Um, yeah. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I can't wait. I cannot wait. My, fav- my favourite martial arts movie is, uh, do you know? Do not have a guess? Hmm. Bruce Lee? Well, that's not the name of but a martial I'm, but, arts I'm, movie. But is he, is he is <laughs> yeah. one of his movies, All right. Big so, Boss? No, good guess. <laughs> but when, yeah, again, before you were born, this is like one of my first memories, like four or five. So obviously pre Netflix era, people had to go to the people yeah. had to go to blockbusters and rent videos. VHS. All right. However, on my on our street, we grew up in Oldham in Manchester, on the sort of outskirts of Manchester. There was a, a woman who used to come round in a car. She had an estate, and in the back of the in the boot of the car, there would be <laughs> bootleg videos. All right. Oh, she, she went to all the Asian houses. <laughs> no, well, we didn't grow up in an Asian neighborhood. I'm just saying she was she was a white lady. <laughs> That, that that matters, yeah. And then she would drive up and down different different streets, and she would rent out videos in the back of a car. She had she had bootlegs. What gangster? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so she would like beep a horn, like an ice cream van. She would beep a horn, and people would come out and then choose what videos they want. And then she had like a little ledger, write down who rented what, and then they would go inside watch them. And the week later, you'd give them a back. Whoa. So yeah, we, I was looking inside the boot. I can still remember this. It's so weird because I was young. Like dad, dad was like, "No, we're watching that." <laughs> 
so we went inside and it was Fist of Fury by Bruce Whoa. Lee. Yeah. And like that was it's really weird because I vividly remember the beginning of Fist of Fury. It stuck with me throughout my childhood. It's Bruce Lee's in like he's dressed all in white and he's going you don't know where he's going. It's a funeral for right. his Sifu. And it's pissing down with rain. Right? He gets out of a rickshaw and he goes to the grave and he jumps in the grave and like he's like Sifu and he's crying and I was like, What is going on here? <laughs> I'm sure and at I a young still age remember that. something that you yeah, remember. It was, yeah, and then, yeah, then it goes to like, there's, it's, from what I remember, because I haven't seen it in a long time, it's a Chinese martial arts school and there's a, the bad Japanese martial arts school. And basically Bruce Lee ends up going to that school and just k- tuning everyone up. Typical Bruce Lee style. Yeah, and he's like, Bruce Lee doesn't get, he gets credit for his martial arts, but his actual acting is amazing. Like you actually, like, he used to do a move where he'd jump up in the air, turn around and like, like jump on the chest of people and like like twist pretend it's killing them and like you could see like the pain of him doing that in his eyes it was amazing and but then you did watch it when you were younger so then I'll, I'd, I'd I've rewatched everyone lo- who likes ever, martial arts rewatch yeah loves I mean Bruce I've Lee. watched some martial art movies and I don't know sometimes the the acting is questionable but then uh, well, but, who is it Donny Lee he's good Do- who is it Donny Donny Lee Donny the one who's IP man Ip man not IP Ip man, man. <laughs> what's he called Donny something. Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen. Yeah. Oh, I like it, man. Yeah. yeah. Another another film that we watched again from the back of the uh, the bootleg estate car was uh, Bruce Leroy. Do you know that one? No. Black exploitation movie about martial arts. Whoa. It's brilliant. You should go check that one out. So, Everyone should go watch Bruce Leroy. I think once in a life. So our dad, being grandmaster in Muay Thai, obviously cho- chose all the martial art movies in the back. Yeah, of the basically. <laughs> That's good though. It's good exposure. But then, like, <laughs> did you? Growing up, did you see much of the Muay Thai? Did you feel? Like, did you did you really know like okay, Muay Thai is so different to Kung Fu or this and that? Yeah, definitely. I I didn't really. Well, you didn't really show an interest in Muay Thai until you came to Thailand when you yeah. were what, fifteen or sixteen. Before yeah. then, you were very a much a girly girl, from what I remember. I don't know. We used to fight yeah, a lot. no, you used to like you would watch all that Paris Hilton nonsense oh. and all that <laughs> sort of stuff. But yeah, so yeah, when I was about what again, again four or five, Dad had a martial arts school a Thai boxing school in Oldham, in Yorkshire Street. Oh, okay, yeah. And I was thinking about this the other day. He, he must have been like, what? He must have started that school. But if this was before I was born, in his mid-20s, which yeah. is pretty impressive. It's well, pretty I mean, cool. that's how m- mum and dad met. No, not well. They met because he was a, a doorman, a bouncer. She told, well, he told me that they met because she was in his class no, doing wrong. Muay Thai and then he need her, she need him in the face, busts his nose, All right, well. and then he always remembered her. <laughs> No, I remember he was about. They went to the same college. Yeah, and then she, he, he was doing a. He was he was a doorman of a nightclub, a famous nightclub in in, in Oldham, and then yeah, she used to go. I think when she was underage, <laughs> and that's how they met. I think. <laughs> but you have to ask them. You have to get Dad on the podcast to talk about that. Yeah, another another time. Yeah. So, uh, what was one of your favorite store? Uh, favorite memories or sto- crazy stories growing up in a somewhat Muay Thai. Okay, so, yeah, like I was talking about, my dad had that Muay Thai gym, then, then obviously that was closed, and then we had the restaurant in Manchester, Yeah. and then above the restaurant, right on the top, there was the Muay Thai gym, the Muay Thai gym. so I used to go every Friday to train. Oh, you did? Yeah, I used to train every I Friday. I used to go play around, I didn't never train. Yeah, until I was about, what, 12 or 13, I think, but yeah, so basically, so yeah, so my dad... If you don't know this story, my dad, Master Skin, and Master Toddy. Well, Master, my dad and Master Toddy first, they went to England in the 70s. And I believe Master Skin and Master Kareem, my uncle, they went after. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, they Master Skin, Master Toddy, they basically had Muay Thai schools and that was their, that's their business. Still is. But my dad decided to get into the restaurant business, try to do something different. Yeah, because um, our granddad, his dad taught him how to cook. Right, so yeah. Cook. So yeah, so, so we went straight from having zero experience in the restaurant industry nothing at all to owning that restaurant and uh, Sign market. Sign market in Manchester the first restaurant outside of uh, outside of London that was in 1985 which is I can't even believe people would know what what, what Thai food is back in 1985 let alone try it so I mean it had a, a great location it was right next to Chinatown on Portland Street in yeah. the middle of Manchester so people were down to try I think uh, maybe well yeah it was it was relatively successful they had it for what, 20 years before they decided to sell up but yeah, above there, they had the, the Muay Thai gym. Yeah. But like when you live in a family that owns a restaurant, anyone who's listening who has a family who owns a restaurant will know that it, the restaurant 
takes control and is pretty much the whole the whole emphasis on life is about that restaurant. I yeah, I grew up thinking we were just like a restaurant family. Yeah, but the Not thing so much a Muay Thai family. <laughs> no, no, it's true, it's true. I believe that as well, yeah, because like if you go out on day trips or you go out, you get a phone dad gets a phone call and you have to rush off and it takes End over your of life. Trip, yeah. yeah. Even though it provides it's it's like a, a sort of a pain in the ass as well that goes with it. But but no, no, it was yeah, nice. I remember one of my birthdays and there was a fire at the, the restaurant and we had to cancel my entire birthday and r- rush off and yeah. go to the restaurant. I, I remember that. I was sat in the car, yeah. not very happy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, see, and then dad, he, he used to like, used to go to Thailand once a year to see his family. Sometimes with us, sometimes without us. And I think one time he came back and he, he's, I think he said to my mum something about... Um, I've just got involved with this new, new promotion. It was the IMCF. Oh, okay. International Amateur Muay Thai Federation. So their whole the goal... first ever yeah, amateur was, Muay Thai Yeah, was to promote amateur Muay Thai. And so we got involved in that. And that basically meant that every, what, once a year or twice a year, he would take two or three weeks out of his year and go to a different country to, to try and promote amateur Muay Thai. So I, I, I never really liked that growing up, you know. Because yeah. I, I thought he left mum on, on his own to raise me and lot, you. Yeah. One, of, one, of our, one of them being you. <laughs> <laughs> and like having to deal with all the restaurant stuff as well. Yeah, mum had that a was lot quite, to deal Yeah, with. I, was like, I thought that was quite harsh. But looking back now, I realised the plan was to grow Muay Thai. So. Yeah. I am understanding now. But, but the, I was younger, I still didn't understand. I was like, wow, well, like, dad goes yeah, away a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Comes back with all these photos like, of these guys like fighting. Like, like going Mexico and Canada and like Beirut. <laughs> yeah. It's really strange. Like. But yeah, that's, that's his passion. So you've got to support it, I guess. I do remember when we were living in England and he had all these Thai fighters living at our house for a bit. And then they were all on the front garden, like training Muay Thai. And this is so odd in like a small town in England, having all these yeah. Thai fighters <laughs> in front of your house, sparring and uh, shadow boxing each other. I remember all the neighbours would go, would come round and watch. <laughs> yeah, so some of the promotions in, in the north of England, they would want Thai fighters to come over. So sometimes dad would bring them over and they would stay at her house before fighting eventually on the cards. So, yeah, yeah. strange. Yeah. Nah, well, for me it. it was. I was quite young and I was like, what is going on? All these random men fighting each other on the lawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, <coughs> talking about your commentating life, how did you get into it? And now where are you commentating? And tell us a bit, little bit of that story. All right. So... I moved to Thailand. It's been ten years now, actually. Oh. Twelve for you, right? Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. I was in America for one year, so. All right, Eleven. But that, that doesn't count. Plus one. <laughs> <laughs> That's why your accent's so messed up. Yeah, it is. Jay with a million. <laughs> I can accents. I can hear a little bit of north of England, hear a little bit of Manchester, a little bit of California coming it's out. All over the place. You grew, you went to school with it, national kids as well, right? Yeah. So, so when I moved to Thailand, I went to international high school, yeah. then I went to international university, yeah. then I went to America, and then back. Here. So it's yeah, all over the place, all kid. Over. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Anyway, to... back to the question. So, 2011, I believe, Dad started or yeah, that took was MBK over Fight MBK Night. Fight yeah, Night. And there was um, they had a they had an announcer commentator called Phil who was doing it at the time. Oh, great! Right, so I so we used to go and watch every. It was every Wednesday back then, and I remember sitting there thinking, "Oh God, I'd love to try that." I'd actually, really, I'm I'm pretty shy. I'm pretty reserved by nature. Pretty introverted, but I thought I'd really like to do that. I'm listening to like. Jim Ross growing up and listening to boxing. I still love listening to Ian Dark on Sky Sports and listening to um, Chevello, of course. Growing up listening to K1. I was like, oh God, I'd love to try that. Like being part of it. Like I was never going to be a fighter. Never really had the the mentality to get into the ring. Right. So I did a judging course. So I used to be a judge. Yeah. And then, and then watching the fights at MBK and listening to Phil. He was, he was doing a tremendous job at the time. I thought I'd really like to give that a go. And then with MBK, with their uh, weird ways, their funding, they decided to cut cut the budget. And then Dad, I don't know if Dad approached me. He might have approached me jokingly and said, do you fancy doing it? Like, you don't fancy doing it, do you? I was like, actually, I really would like to give it a go. So yeah, I ended up doing that every Wednesday. And I really had, I had a great time doing it. I can't, I can't imagine the first time I did it. I don't know if it's on YouTube or not, but it must have been terrible. <laughs> it must have been. But, that's, that's kind of how I feel with the podcast. I mean, episode one was a bit, I was very shy and I think I missed out a lot of information because I was kind of speeding through it. But now I'm getting more comfortable with the mic. Yeah. So, yeah. It's not easy. No, it's no. not. 
I mean, it's easier than fighting, wouldn't you agree? No. No? No, oh, right, like, okay. I enjoy fighting more. <laughs> I, I think I'm more, uh, I, I prefer the action over being verbal. All right, fair enough. Some of the people are like that. I fight forever. <laughs> I remember, right, well, there was one time we were at MBK, and uh, this was when we were in collaboration with Yokao for a little bit. Yeah. And they, they brought some of the fighters who were training at the Yokao Center at the time. So Sanchai came, Sing Dam came, Jordan Watson came, that. right? And I was, that was before I was commentating with Adam, which I'll get on to later. And um, it was just me and like Jordan Watson was there. And I was like, Jordan, fancy doing this? Thinking he'll go, oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, no. <laughs> like, I'd rather get in the room with Giorgio Petrosian. <laughs> exactly. So, it's, you know, it really depends on each person. Like some people are better on, on the microphone and talking and some people are better, better off in the ring fighting someone. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, everyone's different. Oh, yeah, for sure. I understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I was commentating at MBK, and then a um, producer who lives in Bangkok called Al, he, he, was, he randomly came to MBK with his cameras, well, not with his cameras at the first time, saw MBK fight night, saw like, like the big crowds and location, and how different it looked and how cool it looked, mm-hmm. and thought that he could film it, try and sell it on, and eventually did to um, a company called Fightbox that still holds some, some fights on, on, the, on the web. But he wanted, uh, he wanted me to have a co-commentator. Oh, right. So it wasn't just me, which makes sense. Yeah. So my f- initial thoughts were either Adam or John Nutt, who runs uh, Full Metal Dojo in Bangkok. And John's just so busy. Mm-hmm. So I've, I just asked Adam, because I know he's a big MMA mark. Didn't have any experience or knowledge of Muay Thai or kickboxing. But his background's in journalism, so I know he can talk. Right. I know he can, he's articulate, so I asked him to come along. And he was so shy the first time. Didn't have... Never seen someone like someone who can speak, someone who talks a lot, just froze. Whoa, I can't uh, remember as well. Yeah, but but eventually he found his voice, as we all do. And, and got uh, more into fight yeah, sports and as well. Yeah, yeah, he knows he knows a lot. He was watching one last night. Yeah. He watches all the UFC. He knows a lot about the stadium fighters. And then eventually um Thai Fight called, asked us if they wanted to go to an event in the south of Thailand called Narati Wat. So at the time, I was like, oh, my word, like, Sanchai, like, Sudsukhan, absolutely, this is amazing. Like, I told Adam, he's like, oh, okay. Like, didn't really <laughs> no. un- yeah, have a clue, he didn't understand what was going on. Like, <laughs> so I was like, all right, watch, watch these clips. And I was like, oh, my God, like, Sanchai, he's the man, he's amazing. I'm going to get to commentate on him. Awesome. So, yeah, so, I th- well, because Narati Wat is not a war zone, but there's trouble down south, yeah. obviously, on the border of Malaysia. I think the English commentators might have pulled out or they were struggling to find mm-hmm, someone. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, no problem at all. So yeah, we flew down, um, did the gig. We were like, before the gig, we could see all the fighters, like, which was great as well, being a part of the show. And then, yeah, went, went to the stadium, which is just an open field. Yeah. Like a, it wasn't I went a, to one down south as well, yeah. around are you, that area. Yala? Yeah, in Yala. It's also a dangerous we're going back area. To, we're going back to Yala next oh, week. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They have like those, those boulders that were, protect the shops from bombs. Yeah. All along the streets. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it, can be a dangerous place yeah. but anyway we got to the stadium and it was like forty thousand seaters seats that waiting there and me and adam looking at each other like, wow this is amazing like <laughs> sanchez over there getting ready and yeah so we do the gig this is a good story so we do the gig and um we had a great time we did we did really well like we we did we did well not to freeze when sanchez sanchez was fighting it's amazing yeah, right yeah just gawk at him he's just like oh sanchez <laughs> but like all the fighters they come out to watch Sanchai fight as well. Yeah, he wasn't the headliner at the time. It was Sutsukon. All right. So, yeah, Sanchai was on the undercard. Before that, so it used to go Bokal, Bokal left. Oh, yeah. And it was Yotun Klai, Yotun Klai left. And it was Sutsukon. And then, then Sanchai eventually took over as the headliner. Act. So, yeah, all the fighters would come out, whether they fought or not fought, and yeah. come and watch Sanchai perform. Wow. And he was fighting against a, a, a French guy called Charles Francois, who's really tall. And it was just amazing the angles that he cuts and the entertainment value he's, he's perfect for tie fight yeah i agree because you know he left the stadiums around what 30 31 32 years of age did all his business won all the belts got all the accolades and then decided to to basically in tie fight you, you you're entering the ent- entertainment business even though it is muay thai and of course no, the, it's entertainment muay thai yeah thai, it's, en- it's stadium, yeah muay thai. well you have to remember that tie fights on about it's on it starts at 6 20 p.m on a saturday night mm. And goes until 10. Now, if you think about England, 
Saturday night TV is where everyone sits round, all the family, not the people who go out and get pissed, obviously. You know, but <laughs> everyone sits down and watch TV, and that's where all the viewing figures are highest. Right. And everyone's competing. Thai fights prime time on that on that time, so it's got to be entertainment. It can't yes. just be sport. So that's why they use the free round formats and these fireworks and the entrances are made a big it is deal. It's a great of. show, and it's yeah, it truly is a great show. But yeah. it's not. Um, what's the right word? It's not competition Muay Thai. It's no. entertainment Muay Thai. I agree. All right. Um, yeah, so, yeah, like I said, we we uh, we did the show. And then after, remember, remember, we're in the south of Thailand where there's nothing. There's nothing there, right? Yeah, I know. So all these people come in. Oh, well, yeah, they're flooding. They're flooding in to get in there. There's 20 or 30, 40,000 seats and there's people standing as well. And at the end, so me and Adam, I said, okay, now go back, go back to where the fighters are, back in like a little pavilion area. Mm-hmm. And uh, just wait there and then we'll we'll put you in the bus and then we'll go back to the hotel. So me and me and Adam are upstairs, all right, and then we get we get called, all right, time to go into the bus. So we 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 go down the stair, like the staircase, the stairwell, come around the corner, and all the fans are at the bottom, yeah. right? We walk down the stairs, and this these girls there, they start screaming, ah! <laughs> like, and me and Adam are looking at each other like, oh, like maybe one like this Someone's was one, behind no, you. yeah, this is when Antoine and Leo were fighting. Oh wow, okay, right? Yeah, so we were yeah. like, all right, they're there, yeah, because they know how handsome they are, yeah. And like all the girls, like we look up and no one's there. So, <laughs> so we walk down and they're screaming and they're like trying to touch us. Wow! And like they're like taking photos with like Nokia thirty three tens like <laughs> down in the south. <laughs> so yeah, and then we get into the bus and then they're like banging on the windows. It was Beatlemania. I've never experienced anything oh, like wow. it. And you know, and we looked at each other. We're like, oh, we've made it. This is going to be like this every time. We're not going to be able to walk down the street from now on without someone grabbing a hold of us and wanting to take a picture. That has never occurred ever again. Well, <laughs> That's I mean, the one and only to, time. You're going to Yala next time, right? Back to the south. So yeah. maybe it'll happen then. Maybe. Who knows? But yeah. <laughs> so we go back to the hotel and then, yeah, we're drinking, we're having a few beers and we're eating with the, we sat with the Pintos. We're really nice guys. And then, yeah, uh, Matthew Dean's there because he was MC at the time, sat with Sanchai. And then, yeah, we get a photo with Sanchai. Everyone's very nice. Sayat was fighting. Oh, wow. It was just, we were just like, oh, then. and then, yeah, we were just like, oh, please bring us back. Like, yeah. I don't know if the English commentators who were supposed to go a line up for the next event, but if they're not, then just sign us, please. Cause, yeah. And it's been, every show is great. We really, really, really do enjoy it. I know you do. We get to travel around Thailand and we get to commentate on some of the great, great fighters. And they really are good fights as well. They're really entertaining. Some of them are underdogs versus the. Uh, people who should win. But we know in combat sports that's, that's not, that's not well, always I mean, the case. And we the- saw the last few months, PTT got knocked out. And then Centre Town got knocked out by Sasha Moises, so things do happen. I mean, yeah, it's just from the one championship what happened. Right, so. exactly, yeah. So, yeah, definitely but shows. yeah, but the show is nationalistic Thai. It's all about emphasising Thai culture. It is, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. The Thai people, Thai public, should be more appreciative of their sport. So, well, you're a big advocate of showcasing my my Thai in the right way, right? Yeah, I try and, my best. It, well, Thai, well, Thai, Thai fight when they started in 2009, it was a huge tournament. Yeah, and they bring over amazing fighters. Brought, from yeah, the world. Youssef was the, in the tournament. Uh, Fabio Watson, Pinker. Yeah. No, no, it, Liam Harrison. Oh, right. The Thai was, uh, I think it was, I think it was called Petch Focus. He now trains in Yokao. Oh yeah, he, he went to Banchamek. Now he's in, uh, now he's in the Yokao gym as a. I think he's like a pad holder now, but yeah. Wow. But yeah, so they had like, and I, I think, oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I forgot he's, he's changed his name as they sometimes yeah, do in Muay Thai. Yeah, But yeah, but the final of that tournament was Pinker against Youssef. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I went to that Thai fight. Do you remember going? It was at Huamak, right? Yes, it Huamark was, yeah. Rajaman, Rajamangala, the indoor, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, that was a great tournament. Yeah, no, yeah. But they, Boaka was there in attendance. Wow. This was like... Before Boaka was on the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. And like, everyone was, I think even Sanchai, I think I saw Sanchai like walking outside, but the stadium was packed. Yeah. There were celebrities around the front row. They'd basically like grabbed like the entertainment, they'd really like marinate the right. entertainment aspects of, of Muay Thai with the actual fighting. And that was they a legitimate have... tournament before the one tournament. Did they have band on as well? Like music? But, uh, maybe. Thai yeah, music, I... body slam or something like that. One did that. Yeah, one, one did, did that, that as well. But yeah. I, don't, I don't know if one if Thai Fight did it or not, to be honest. Hmm. But yeah, that was in 2009. And then they had the TV show, if you remember that. No? Remember two who used to train up looked yeah. if I was on the TV show. It was a car oh, check. Oh, right, the car show. check. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, th- th- nothing much happened from that. It was like Team Sutsukon against Team Sayok. Right. 
And then, yeah, Sutsu Khan and Sayok fought in a car check fight at the end. Do you remember that? I remember two just going to, to do the show. I, didn't but actually, I don't really I, yeah, remember I, watching it. Did it I even watched, get released? Yeah, it, it, was on, it was on Channel 3, I think, oh. once, a, one, once a day, maybe. But yeah, some, some really good fighters were on it, including Yusuf. Yeah. Okay, so you, um, you fought on other, I mean, sorry, no, you've not. You've commentated, <laughs> I fought. Uh, you've commentated right. on other promotions. Um, tell us about them. You've done kickboxing, you've done Muay Thai, you've, yeah. have you done MMA? Uh, I've, yeah, for Kunlun, not, not a standard MMA, but actually, I've done a few, a few fights for uh, FMD. All right. Just, just, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, just to help out those guys. John and uh, John and Rui actually fought on uh, actually commentated on a on a fighter who's going to be in the heavyweight division now of the UFC. So, wow! Yeah, that's Ali great Akbari. Experience. So yeah, look out for him. He's a monster. Uh, yeah. So after Thai fight, I think the same year, actually that that Thai fight approached us. Kun Lung were doing a show in Bangkok. Mm. Sasan was the matchmaker, and he said, "Do, do me and Adam fancy coming along?" At and... Workpoint Studio. No, this was at um, Asia Teak. Wow. Do you not remember that one? This was 2015, and um, it was City Chai versus John A. Risco, who's a Spanish fighter who fights out of infusion. He fought and defeated Borkow, actually, a few months ago. Um, and Superbomb was on the card as well. But they used to do mixed MMA and kickboxing. Kunlun, right? Yeah. So, yeah, what's at Kunlun? And then, then they used to bring me over to, to China to do, the, uh, to do the shows there for a few years. And then... What happened was one time we we got there, we'd arrived, and the 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 equipment that they, they didn't really they didn't seem they like they really cared about the English commentators. But anyway, right. we got there, we got to the ring, and the like the they'd hardly brought out any equipment for us. <laughs> so what did you do? We were so we were just so miffed that we yeah. like the job that we did it was really poor. Oh. And after that, we got the boot. They were like, no more, yeah. And it was at the same time That's that all, right. yeah, and the same time All Star was. Was uh, was coming up, right? I know like, I had a good relationship with Sasa, and yeah. so I thought, oh, they will bring over the last me, and they didn't as well because of the Kunlun fiasco. Oh my! But it's gosh. all right. It's fair enough. I understand. Shit happens. Shit happens. Um, what's your most rememberable fight that you've commented on? Um, maybe your top three. You'd have to say one. You should have told me this before, and then I could have remembered. <laughs> you know what sticks out is is a fight that no one's probably going to heard of. Um, Pech Samui against uh, Mateus Johnson. If you go onto YouTube and type that fight in, I think it's already got me and the Adam. Fight. Yeah, me and Adam, um, we're getting the. We've decided now to to approach Thai fight and say, can we have the footage? We want one. Oh, we, what we're trying to do is get one Sanchai fight from the card, because he's a legend and he's not going to be around forever. We want that fight. We want that stockpile. The Sanchai fights, and maybe the best fight of the night on the card. And one of the best that we've done was a few months ago in, in Sarabury was Petch Samui against Matthias Johnson. It was three, it's a three-round war. Go and check that out. Another good fight that we commentated on was in Kunlun was uh, Buakao against Dylan Salvador. Dylan Salvador is a really, really good fighter, a really strong fighter. And uh, it gave Buakao a run for his money in that fight. Oh, and obviously, for your record, uh, uh, commentating on a Buakao fight or a Senchai fight is just... Yeah, it's, it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Dylan's now fighting MMA, I think. He's got a chat. Do you know Pinker's doing MMA as well? Really? I think so, yeah. I think he, he got knocked out by Anvar in glory. Yeah. And I feel like he's decided now, after he's lost a Nongo as well in one, to uh, give MMA a try. So I'll be interested to Does see. Does he have much jujitsu? Well, like, he's training. But still, yeah. though, I mean, these people who fight MMA, most, most of the top guys, they've been, had years and years of experience training jiu-jitsu and the ground game. Well, the argument the, the argument to that is that he's got years and years of experience fighting at top-level Muay Thai. So it is, he, but then he might get put in or matched up with a high-level MMA fighter and just because of his Muay Thai experience. Well, he's up at, he's up at um, Tiger, I believe. Oh, sorry, just down, say down, yeah. down at Tiger in the south. Right. So we'll see. I think, that, I think I'm correct in saying that anyway. Mm. You want one more fight? Oh, got it. Sanchai against Chad Collins. Oh, wow. I was there at that fight. You were there, right? Yeah. yeah. What that, a war. And the reason I say that, well, Sanchai, obviously, he's been Sanchai, but Chad. Great fighter. He's, I remember me and Adam watching that fight and we're like, this kid, he's the, he's the real deal. He had a fight at MX yeah. a few months prior and yeah. he defeated Pacon, which was amazing. But everyone everyone always says, oh, Pacon doesn't really try. Train. Yeah, he doesn't really try. He doesn't really <laughs> train but that's and it's still an amazing still victory a great fighter, yeah. so yeah so it's two round i think two rounds sanchai took but the last round 
Chad took that round. Chad took, was pretty annoyed that he lost that fight, but I mean, but that just fought, shows the mentality that he's got. He fought amazing, though. Yeah, yeah. So and now he's right. fighting for Olympini Stadium title, I think. Right. Yeah, he, he trained out of um, what was Sitsong Pinong in Phuket. He's now changed his name to Revolution. Oh, has it? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm right. In saying Same that. owner. Tim Fisher. Yeah. Yeah. Really? But I think I don't know if they parted ways or whatever. But yeah, I think it's called Revolution. Did a great Facebook post about it. On, uh, oh, yeah, they've got the, they've got the social media game. No, but I mean, social media is everything now. I think yeah. that's one thing that one championship have done very well is the social media and all the marketing that's online, and which and what Glory kind of need to do. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd go with that. But another fight I'd have to throw in there as well was Superborn versus Jom Tong. That was the final of the Kunlun 70kg tournament. That's the one I commented on that when Superborn was a bit of an unknown entity. Obviously, he was... Muay Thai style got signed by uh, Banshee and he just took to kickboxing like a duck to water. He was, he was fantastic in that tournament, and uh, yeah, again knocking out Jom Tong in the final. I think Super- up to stop Superborn and also Peshnong. There, they are two Thai fighters who are again are willing to learn more. You know, they they know that they need to adapt their style and they're willing to adapt their style depending on what fight they're fighting. So Muay Thai or kickboxing. I just want to see them fight. I yeah, want to see them be, great. I want to get, get them in, involved in the mix more. They're in Australia right now doing something. I know, yeah. yeah. They need to fight more. That's true. I'd like to see, yeah, I, I, I'm a massive Superman fight. He might be my my favourite uh, kickboxer right now and I want to see him get involved. I'd love, to, I'd love to have seen him in the tournament if I'm being yeah. honest. But yeah, if not, glory, get him signed. Same weight class. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Go on then, next question. Next question. Talk, well, I was just talking about the commentary, really, and about your life in commentary. And um, I say, what about you? Why was the what was the reason for you starting to fight? Because I was I was talking about you growing up, not having any interest really in Muay Thai or combat sports. Like when I was downstairs watching K One. Watching the watching the tournaments with Boa Kao. I was watch, playing Grand Theft Auto. Watching <laughs> on the PlayStation. What, yeah, watching the. Uh, <laughs> so I was I was, I would used to wake up. I used to look through the uh, TV guide to see when the K1 really? World Max was on, and then see when the uh, the Grand Prix was on. Yeah. So the Grand Prix is a heavyweight because I was a massive. I love, I love Bada Hari. Yeah, it must be too. Even though it was a bit of a <laughs> it was a bit of a dick. I thought it was I thought it was so entertaining. Well, that's it. Isn't so it's yeah, to watch that and then watch the uh, the World Max. Some of that me and dad used to do, like together would watch watch the World Max, watch Buakal. Well, maybe it was because as I was younger, when I was younger, I obviously, you know, you fighting me when I was younger. Not so fighting. Not fighting, but, Toy you know, fighting. play wrestling Playing. and things like that. Every sibling so does it. it. May, no, it's good. It's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It made me tough. I don't remember this, to be honest. You did. <laughs> anyway, it made me tough. And maybe uh, after, later, when, I started, when dad did MBK fight night and yeah. I was helping him, I was kind of doing the ring girl. And then watching two girls fight, then maybe I wanted a taste of it. it yeah. Was, yeah, it was. It was definitely when I saw two girls fighting who were about the same size that I was, and I just thought I can do that, and that was it. I just started training and got into the ring. And yeah, yeah growing up, you were. Uh, I'm gonna put it out there. Growing up, you were a little fatty. You were a yeah. little fatty girl. <laughs> I was like, the, I think it was the only one who told you like you could you, do with no, losing a little bit of weight. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Good for you though, weren't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not. There's nothing wrong with it. To be honest, when I came to Thailand, you know, people in Thailand they always call you out if you get fat. Well, it's not. It's not like a disability, like it's viewed as in England, right? You make yourself fat, or you make yourself thin. It's that. It's right. I mean, if you're fat, you're fat. Sorry. No, it's good. Yeah, because because of all of that, then I did get into working out and get into shape and eating right, and it's definitely changed my life. That you know, people telling me straight to my face, straight to my face, that I was fat. So I did something about it. Yeah. Um, no, I was the same. Like growing up, maybe watching Bruce Lee movies. I don't know. Our Rocky movies. They were massive influence on me as well. I always like used to do sit ups and stuff in my bedroom. I used yeah. to be really good at sport. This is the frustrating. Football. Bit. I was good at football, cross country, yeah, yeah, captain yeah. football, cross country, tennis. Like if there's any tennis, I play that. Yeah. Played golf, and then like I don't know. Growing up in my teens, everything just went away. Wait, I couldn't, couldn't breathe. Like after. Five minutes after ten minutes, it was so frustrating. It's, tr- it's strange. My body kind of changed swapped. as well because I was I was small, mm. and then like as I grew, I became like Pet Morocco. I was all arms and all arms and legs. <laughs> but that's good though; it's longer reach. It could be awkward, no, but no. I guess. But it's when you're playing football and you're like messy. Well, not like technically, but like as small as him, and like you've got a low center of gravity, and all of a sudden you're like you're tall. 
It's so different. You've got to like adapt your style. You've got to con- completely change who you are. That's it's so frustrating. Funny. Yeah. It's funny because when I was younger, I wasn't into sports. And then when I got older, I got more into sports. Mm. So it totally swapped. Yeah. No, well, I'm still into sports, but I play football on Thursdays. That's about it. But yeah, you you didn't care at all. Yeah. About... But then, you know, I got into Muay Thai. And, uh, and then when I went to America, I was on the cross-country team for that college. All right. Okay. Yeah. And then I um, did my back in and then I had surgery. Did, did people know what, how you did your back in? Oh, I was so I was in America doing an athletic coaching course, and I had to do all these different types of sports. And I had an Olympic weightlifting class, and okay. I did deadlifts way too heavy. It was my fault because I was being competitive. And I lifted it too heavy, and then I felt a pop. There was no pain at that time; just felt the pop. And I was like, "This is oh, really? different." Eek. Yeah, and then that so that was about three years ago, and just over time, it just got worse and worse and worse, and. Um, maybe like last year, I couldn't even train Muay Thai anymore. I couldn't run, couldn't do anything. So um, we made the decision to have a spinal fusion, the same one that Tiger Woods had. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, how old Tiger Woods? Do you know anyone as young as you who's had that oh, that procedure? No, I mean, the average age is around forties. Yeah. Does it in work? The 40s. How does it? How does it keep as you get older? Well, it's supposed to last around fifty-five years. Okay. Right. And because I had anterior, which means um, the incision is from the front, so the screws are placed more like inside the spine rather than from the back, which is like what they used to do traditionally. So because of this, I'm able to have more range of motion, or hopefully can have more range of motion right. when when I recover. So when you're about 80, <laughs> and I'm 86, I'll be dead hopefully, I don't have to push you around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when I'm that old, it shouldn't matter so much, right? All right. Well, okay, well, knows, I, can, I can do it again. The who operation. knows, though? Medical science by then. You'll be a half robot. <laughs> I think so. I feel like half robot. I'll wake up very stiff. Anyway. Are, are you, can you exercise at the moment? Um, I'm just doing rehabilitation exercises. Okay. Um, core strengthening, stretching, and swimming. I cannot run yet. I cannot do anything that will, will cause any impact because my bone is still fusing, which means it's still like growing over the, the, um, the screws. All right, okay. To join it together. So just lots of calcium and eat well and uh, just, yeah, do a little bit of motion, stretch stretch it out. That's the best I can do right now. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, Aaron, thank you very much for being on the show. Is that it? <laughs> Is that it? What do you, you want to talk about? What else do you want to talk about? Well, anything. Life in Thailand. Life in Thailand. UFC. What do you think of uh, women's Muay Thai? I want to, because, you know, you had that big, you had that big rant, didn't you, on Facebook about the state of Muay Thai? And I completely disagree with you. Right. Okay. So beginning of the year until maybe last month. Yeah. There was a big impact in Muay Thai, everything going down, I think, in terms of getting sponsorships. And also a lot of TV stations on Thai TV, they they give up, give up, give up their licenses. I did write a list down there. I've listened, I've listened, question. yeah. Yeah, so that means like some of the fights that are on those TV channels have gone as well. So, and I told you Top King, they've gone because uh, they couldn't get sponsorship. Obviously, you know about NBK Fight Night. But it's still going, isn't it? Is Just it? Just without Dad. Is it still going? I, I Who's don't know. doing it? The same people? I think so. I don't know. I, th- I, I thought it was just that one show. Mm, I think they might be having, yeah, I think they're having, they, well, they advertised MBK Fight Night and then a show on the last Friday of every month as well. Oh. Yeah. Then, all right, well, we'll see about that because I haven't seen anything online about right. it. So, so my, right, listen, my, Jade's argument was that Muay Thai is dying, you can't get In sponsor- Thailand. In Thailand, you can't Dying get- in Thailand. That's the thing that a lot of people started to argue with this because I didn't mean around the world. I actually said that around the world promotions are coming up you know, as, as well as the fight quality and fighter quality it is getting better around the world. Like Muay Thai Grand Prix that I went to in the UK, obviously one championship, glory, things like that. There, it's coming up. But in Thailand, I feel like it is coming down a little bit. What do you think about um, one championship promoting Muay Thai? Yeah, it's good. They're bringing their live. Is it good? Yeah. What about the fact that they don't play the music? That is, a, well, Lion Fight also. <laughs> Lion Fight don't play the music either. No, but yeah. you, you, you said on one of the episodes okay. on here that you were not I, happy that promotions don't put on the music, I right? said because I went to Muay Thai Grand Prix in the UK and they did play it. And just from hearing the music, you, you, you just create a different type of energy that does relate to Muay Thai. Um, but now that so, so many promotions don't play it, then I didn't even realize. Uh, yeah, look at, look at one championship, right? Yeah. Outside the stadiums, 
probably like the biggest Muay Thai promotion. I know, I know it's mixed. But then again, maybe it depends on if you're there live and you hear it there live or if you're watching it from your TV set. Well, I think sponsorships, sponsorships will only care about like viewing figures, right? Oh, so so if, it makes sense, <laughs> if it makes sense for the viewers and it's not off-putting for them, then I don't have a problem with it at all. And you've got to remember as well that it's four-ounce gloves. So is it is it strictly Muay tradi- traditional Muay Thai? Right, same as MX. MX, Muay, MX Extreme, they don't um, play Muay Thai music. Yeah, they play, th- I think that's for... They have their own theme tune. That's for the uh, the Chinese market, right? No, but, but when, the, when, the, when the fights are going on, there's no music. Well, that's Muay Extreme, isn't it? They don't actually say it's Muay Thai. Yeah, they don't, yeah. Okay, so, so that's the four they, ounces. They found um, a loophole there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's yeah. just a different way of doing so, things, yeah, Jade. That is, though. M- M- uh, MX Extreme, another promotion that's gone down, and the only way it's been saved is because they found Chinese sponsors who have kind of influenced a lot of the show. So mostly it's, it's catered towards the Chinese. So they always have to have Chinese fighters on there. And they are, you know you see in the background, they always have Chinese uh, sponsors. They have a Chinese uh, announcer as well. Yeah, a Chinese announcer. Goes along with the, with the Thai announcer. Yeah. Yeah. And Asia Teak, they MC. used to have fights every night. Small, just very, very low level. Um, but they don't do that every night either. That's changed too. Not every night, but they still have them, right? Oh, I don't know because uh, Kru Pong Gel, who's a trainer at Luxor Fight, he was a referee for that, and like he doesn't have that job anymore. So mm, okay, big changes. I'm sure a lot still, of changes happening. But there's still as many Muay Thai shows and and Muay Thai uh, fights on TV as they've ever been, right? Would you agree with that? Um, no. In Thailand, because I just told you the TV channels, a lot of them have given up the licenses, but the main ones, yes. Channel 3, Channel 5, Channel 7, Channel 11. And what about Max? Oh, okay. Four or five times a week, every yeah. night. Yeah, so I did actually talk about Max on that show as well. Okay. Um, Max have their own thing going on, and they are the, I, told, I did say that they're the winners in this little Muay Thai race in Thailand. Because <laughs> um, the owner of Max Muay Thai, he owns the stadium, he owns the land that it's on, you know, everything... All the merchandise is all Max merchandise. Um, he even bought the vans that send the sat- the satellite signal around the world, or okay. to, the sa- to the to the satellite. So he yeah. Well, I mean, they're on different different stations. I think yeah. even in Thailand, and every they have night. an application, a phone application. Yeah, and they go live on Facebook, and you can listen to the Thai commentary or the English commentary. So yeah, but yeah. I but so, they're so how's that dying then? So not them. Not them. But okay. like a lot of others are and struggling, the, I would Muay say. Muay Thai Super Champ on a Sunday, Matthew Dean's the MC. Yeah, that's this, still going. It's still going and there's so much so much of a long queue for fighters to get on the show. Oh really? Yeah, I actually spoke to Matthew Dean this week and I said, Oh, like I have this fighter, can you help me get on the show? Yeah. And he said, There's a really long queue. I believe it. A really long queue. Yeah. So if that's the case, that means there's not enough places for them to fight, right? No, I actually I actually think that there's a... Uh, more people coming to Thailand to train than ever before and unwilling to fight. That's yes. why there's, there's so much demand. There is so But many I think there's here. still as many uh, fights on TV as ever before. So uh, to say it's dying. I mean, I it's, it's it, a nice tagline though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's good for marketing, <laughs> but, but I don't believe it. That's what I'm saying. I do, think, I do believe that Muay Thai is struggling in Thailand and also uh, not just Muay Thai, MMA as well, because I did talk with the guys from FMD. Mm-hmm. You know, after that, after that little rant I had on Facebook, and they agreed with me as well. So, you know, you know pr- promoters are definitely feeling it. Okay. Well, yeah, like I said, I'm just a commentator. I don't know about the business side of most of the fights, but what I f- can see on TV, and I see that the gyms are filling up most of the time. I was looks so far getting on, doing well, doing fine, right? Um, right now it's okay. Yeah. Um, the, it's kind of lowest, getting to lower season sure. now in Thailand yeah. in general. Uh, the higher season, though, I would say, was like October until February. So now it's starting to get quiet. But how long have we been going now? Eight years. Yeah, maybe? God, that's gone. That's flown by. Yeah, but we do well though. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, good vibes at the gym. Everyone gets along and um, the training's good. So we just have to agree to disagree then, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I do think so. I mean, I'm not saying it's dying, but it's, it's it's definitely struggling. It's definitely hard times right now in terms of sponsorship. Also, if you've got um, UFC Fight Pass. There's a, there's a, obviously they need content. They've got the WLC. Blue Arena. They've got, they've got Glory as well on W, on mm-hmm. Fight Pass, I believe. They're, they're promoting a show called Absolute Muay Thai, which uh, Rajdam Nern, Lumpini and Blue Arena, yeah. before the main fight start or before they, they put on fights specifically for Absolute Muay Thai that shows on UFC Fight Pass. Yeah, so that's so great. That, so that's, so that's international, yeah, that's, international uh, yeah. helping us. However, 
I I struggle with the I still struggle with the concepts of stadium Muay Thai. Right. I don't know about this about the five. I don't. It was was it like this in the golden generation? I don't know. Where it's five rounds, where the first two rounds basically fighters are just tapping each other. No, and this is the influence from the gamblers. I know, I know. Yes. And then the fifth round, they just decide to uh, who's the who's won already. Yeah. I don't know if that can make it to an international audience, and if that's yeah. what it is on absolute Muay Thai, then. I agree. I think that um, Westerners wouldn't understand what's going on. Why the why is it round one, round two, and round five, and why the fighters not fighting? They only fight in two rounds. Because right? I, I you meant, three, mentioned four. I commentate at channel channel seven as well for, yeah. for the app oh, yeah. that's now that's not happening anymore. Is it? Yeah, they didn't. Have, they, the business idea was terrible. It's basically as much as Netflix. Oh. To to watch to, Muay to watch Muay Thai that you can see on Facebook. I think because one of the app streams it live or one of the right. pages streams it live but with English commentary so you're basically just paying for English commentary. the English commentary um, but yeah like sometimes like, when you're at the stadium you're seeing like the first round and they're going so slow it's like it can be difficult for us to talk about I'm sure because you, you're basically just saying the same thing over again this oh, is look at one kick this is like traditional in Muay Thai it's that like, you know they, they're sussing each other out and they're seeing what tactics they can yeah. then employ in the in the upcoming rounds Whereas you go to Thai fight, it's just explosive. And it's just three rounds. So, yeah, I don't know if it was like that previously or it's gotten more like that as the gamblers have taken over. Yeah, because I've definitely, I've been at stadiums where fighters have actually done like kind of more fancier moves and more experimental moves and then the gamblers would get angry and they'd yell, they'd yell into the stadium into the, at the fighters and yeah. the promoters. And oh, yeah. It's, 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 I think, it's scary. Yeah, you this know? is the thing, I think that's always happened. Yeah. But now we've got, we've got cameras on our phones. You just see it happening more than ever. That's mm-hmm. what I believe. I would assume so anyway. Yeah. But yeah, but like the state of Muay Thai in Thailand, as a, as looking at the fight, the Thai fighters, very good. But the foreign fighters, they're just getting better and better. I agree. And I've got to say, Definitely I think agree. I think it's, I hate saying it, but I think maybe the effort. And I think foreign fighters know they've got to catch up yes. with the Thai fighters who have been training from a very young age. So they've got the, the, it's the effort. The way they, uh, they eat, to take control and supplementation as well. Sports science. I think supplements have, have played a big part in the way that fighters are building their bodies up. And we can see the evidence with uh, with Rafi, who's been a stadium champion. He's just signed with one. Yeah. He looks tremendous. And um it's Chad Collins against I can't remember his name, a Brazilian fighter for the uh, for the stadium title. That's coming up soon as well. No, I definitely agree. And I think that the Thai fighters, they really rely on their experience way too much. I mean, Yasin Klai just proved that. I mean, he underestimated his uh, Western opponent and obviously didn't train as high as he should have done. I mean, a fight's still a fight. Can't always rely on experience, especially when the Westerner, he puts 100% into his training camp, 100% into the fight. Everything, his heart goes in there. Yeah, Yusuf's been undefeated now for around 30 oh, fights. Yeah. He's fought everyone at 160, I wow. believe. And he's pretty much decimated that division. That would be a good signing for one, yeah. to be honest. Because th- he was fighting for Phoenix yeah, Fighting Championship. Phoenix? Well, they were sponsored by PSM, which is the, the merchandise company of, P- of, of uh, Yusef's gym. Yeah, Petsaman. Petsaman. Yeah. But yeah, but they decided to change their name now from Phoenix to PSM Fight Night. Oh. So I don't know what's happening. It's basically my answer. <laughs> So maybe maybe Yusef is available. I don't know. Again, Probably if I was not, if they're using PSM equipment, I guess. I, yeah, but I mean, can they get can they get TV deal? Can they get? It depends who this owner is of the right PSM. I right? guess so. But yeah, but if he's available, one should snap him up because that'd be it'd be tremendous. Especially if they're going to put him in the four ounces. Yeah, I'd like to see strong. that in Muay Thai. I mean, he won the tournament at a Thai fight, and then uh, I heard that Thai fight weren't so happy about that because he won against the. Susakon. Susakon. He was their golden boy at the time. Defeated Susakon, yeah. Well, yeah. it was fair and square. So it was very respectful. It was a really good fight, though. Actually. It was a good fight. Yeah. yeah. I saw some really good fights at Thai Fight yeah. in the past. Yeah, when they do the tournaments at the end of the year and they put the ties together against each other, they oh, basically yeah. do a four man. So they pick um, like two Thai fighters, usually, some, or one Thai fighter, and then uh, two of the best foreign fighters that have proved themselves in another event over the course of the year. So we've had Chana John against Sayok, yeah. Sutsu Khan against uh, Yusef, of and course. We've seen Sayok Antoine, against Antoine. Antoine, 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 Antoine against Sutsu Khan as well. Yeah. Sayok against Antoine. Yeah, so they great. do put them together yeah, at the end of the year. Yeah, they're great. Anything else you want to talk about? 
Mm. Any other questions? Any other questions for you? No, not really. I mean, you said the next Thai fight you're going to do is at... Yeah, it's in the Yala. 29th in Yala, 29th of June. So I'll be going down there and uh, checking those fights out. We've just come back from Samui a few weeks ago. Yeah, that was a good fight. Always oh, great in Samui. Love going down I'm there. Sure it's you amazing. do. Yeah. Beautiful island. It's amazing. What a place. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, thank you. Got, you. We got any more upcoming guests on here? Um, Need to get some more fighters on. Don't well, we? um, next episode I want to have Paco, who's a coach oh, at Lukta yeah, yeah. yeah, he was coaching okay. Joe while Joe's, Joe was here in Thailand. Get that on. Of course I will in the future. <laughs> but yeah. And any other fighters out there who want to come and learn how to talk and not be shy in front of the camera message Jade learn how to talk <laughs> well, not I'm, learn still, to talk, I'm still learning too though I'm I mean, still you, building well, my confidence you know what? up right yesterday there's a fighter on Glory right we talked about that already called Alex Alex Pereira yeah Alex Pereira's defeated uh, Adesanya who's the current interim champion at UFC he's defeated Simon Marcus and yesterday knocked out Wilness oh. okay top 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 fighters go on his social media and he's got about 4,000 followers wow this guy okay. should be in the hundreds of thousands. Well, I mean... So, yeah, promote yourselves, yeah, fighters. They definitely need to because there's a lot of talent out there who are not signed to places uh, to promotions like One Championship. And I think that is because they don't have that many following I agree. online. And, hey, do you know and, what? Sometimes it's the same for, for commentators as well. If you've, got a, if you've got a lot of followers, a lot of people who are friends with you, I think you've got more chance potentially of getting, a, getting work. Yeah, Because then you agree. bring all those followers, all those... Um, Friends to the promotion. It gives well, you eyes. You know, one championship. But fighters should do it more, for sure. Yeah, one championship. On their website, they promote themselves as a sports marketing company. Okay. So obviously, they want people who are marketable. So obviously, it's going to be fighters with a lot of followers. Yeah, and this, so this weekend, here's one for you. Uh, Deontay Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, is fighting Dominic Brazil. I think it's, that's his name, Brazil, right? I think a couple of nights ago, did you hear what Deontay Wilder said? No. He said that he's looking forward to actually killing someone in the ring. His aim is to try and kill someone. What happens an hour later, everyone on social media, like my friends who like combat sports are saying how disgusting, how terrible it is, tagging Deontay Wilder, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you about it now. It creates hype. That's all it why he's done it. Yeah, it creates hype. Floyd Mayweather, when he was pretty boy. Hence hence Muay Thai dying. Well, (laughs) Floyd Floyd Mayweather, when he was pretty boy, no one really cared, even though he was actually knocking people out. As soon as uh, 24-7 came along and he was fighting Oscar De La Hoya and he changed to money. He started throwing money at the camera and started becoming a prick. Right. Everyone was tuning in to try and to watch him lose. So, so there's nothing wrong with being the heel, being the bad guy. But being in between is where you don't want to be. You either want people to cheer for you, you either want people to hate yeah, you. Hate or love. Or, but in the middle, it's not a great place to be. Totally agree. Totally agree with that. I was going to say something I completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> that's good isn't it an interviewer <laughs> I told you I'll, I'll teach you how to talk but don't forget what you're going to say <laughs> no yeah but it's all, it's all good um, really happy with this podcast with this episode yeah I've had fun else? it's been a really good time yeah thank Enjoyed you Aaron it. what are you doing tonight any plans later no um, not, well you say it's Maka Booker isn't it it's yeah. a Buddhist holiday in Thailand so no one's drinking or doing anything oh I remember what I was going to say now when you ask me who are my my next guests on the on the podcast, well, I would like to have Thai fighters on here, but because of the language, we're gonna have to try and figure that out. Subtitles. Huh? Subtitles, so it would, it would only go onto YouTube, not on the podcast. Okay. So I would like to have like yeah, Pe- well, Pech Nong and Superbon already speak English, so that should be okay. Well, Pech Nong does. Super Superbon speak Super Superbon speaks okay English. Pech Nong would be great. Probably be better. In he's Thai really charming. Place. He's a really he's a really nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Even if I could have Senchai, that'd be great too. But, yeah, he just doesn't really speak much English at all. So, yeah, we'd have to figure out how to do that. So, hopefully in the future, if we can do subtitles, That'd be great. it'll just go I think that's YouTube. a great idea. Because, yeah, a lot of people who watch Muay Thai, who follow the sport, don't really know a lot about the fighters other than what, other than what they see on social media. Yeah. And some of it's manipulated. All right, then. So, um, there's a lot more in store in the future. And I definitely am going to have Aaron on here uh, a lot more often. I enjoyed that, the little uh, recap on the fights and also talking about our life in Muay Thai. I think we've we've covered a lot of things, but there's a lot more to talk about. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you very Let's much. Let's save it for another day. Yeah. Thank you very much. And see you in the next episode.